Forte kills, Tarot GG, it's a what the moose here and I've got a Blitzcrank guy today to hopefully inspire you to check him out. He's a really fun champion and I want to start this guy by saying, well, Ash, grab your coat baby, you've pulled. However, on a more serious note, what I want to talk about is how you should approach playing Blitzcrank, especially in the earlier phases of laning. Level 1, even if you hit a pull, there's a pretty low chance you'll be able to get a kill from that. However, the time it takes you to get to level 2 gives you the opportunity you need to analyse enemy AD's movements, see whether they go for risky last hits, and see whether you have the opportunity to predict and get a nice pull as I did just there. You have to understand that every single lane and every single action in every lane revolves around last hits. Whether it's trading with the enemy top lane, it involves last hitting and when the enemy goes in for last hitting. Or whether it's trying to bait out a gank for a jungle and mid lane, it possibly involves getting some CC when they go for a last hit or going in when they go in for a melee last hit that's close range. Next, I want to dispel some of the common rumours and myths that it only takes one good blitz pull to win a game because we all know that's completely and utterly nonsense. You should only be missing a maximum of two or three pulls per game and that's not because you're godlike and you're going to hit every single ball every single opportunity, that's because you're only going to use your cue if there's a high chance of you succeeding in the pull. If you think of it this way, if you're Morgana or you're Blitzcrank and you're running directly at the enemy, they're immediately going to try and run away, try and juke you, and that's because you pose a threat. The minute you miss your cue, you become less of a threat and they can start to harass you back and you're going to take a lot of damage. The key to playing Blitzcrank is playing extremely, extremely aggressive. You also need to remember to not rush any pool. You have the whole length of the lane to make a pull, you have all the time in the world to make a pull and you need to remember that as soon as you miss you lose all of your threat and you immediately become in danger. After the early phases of laning, every time it's viable you want to charge straight at the enemy's AD, get as close to them as possible and in an ideal world you want to use your E before you attempt a pull. Remember, like I said before, use the whole length of the lane. They're probably going to duke backwards or duke forwards or duke backwards or duke forwards. But still, don't use your pull until you're 100% sure you're going to hit it. They're going to expect an early pull. And 9 times out of 10, if you're missing a pull and you're getting close, it's because you rushed it. And realistically, your pull was never ever going to hit. Surely not. Surely not. And ladies and gentlemen, that is why they call me Captain Nook. Oh, thank you very much. In terms of items, I'm almost exclusively building triple gold per 10 and moose seed 5 boots. Obviously you're going to take wards and oracles when they're needed. My first major purchase is Trinity Force and the first component of Trinity Force I buy is Zeal purely for the extra movement speed it offers and the extra potential it offers for roaming and pulls. Trinity Force is integral to the way that Blitzcrank should be played, however I see so many people overlooking it. You want to be up in their faces, causing as much damage as possible and disrupting as much as possible and that's everything that the Trinity Force offers you. You'll be able to pick it up extremely early with gold per 10 seals, quints, masteries, triple gold per 10 items and the amount of kills and cysts you pick up in game. After Triforce, you should look at picking up a Shirelia's Revelry. It'll benefit you so much of your disruption, but it'll also benefit your team with engaging and disengaging due to its short cooldown. After that, you can look at Aegis, and if your jungle has Aegis, you can take Zeki's Herald. And for extreme, extreme late game items, you can take Frozen Heart, and if someone on your team has Frozen Heart, you can take Randoon's Omen. In terms of runes, I run armor marks, gold per 10 seals and quintessences, and magic resist per level blues. Blitzcrank's passive really makes up for the lack of armor in the seals, and the extra gold per 10 is so so beneficial in picking up an early Trinity Force. This next clip is highlighting the fact you don't have to go for a pull early. You can get so close to them with all of your move speed, go for the knock up, and then if they start to escape, if they ulti away, if they flash away, 
you're able to pull them back in and make the kill that way. You never ever want to waste your pull. And similarly, when roaming mids, although I don't get the E, I make sure to get as close as possible. She's forced to flash early and we're able to pick up the kill there with relative ease. These next few clips are highlighting the damage potential of picking up a Triforce on Blitzcrank and showing you why it is such a great item. So I see here comfortably taking down Ash, she has her eye edge, she has her zeal, building into Phantom Dancer, we're able to take her down comfortably, escape on low HP, and this essentially because you're becoming less of a support and more of a bruiser, but indirectly by doing that, you're becoming more of a support by the way you're able to cause more damage and more disruption to the enemy team. And like I said before, while you have your pull, you're always a threat, no matter what HP you have. Getting the pull through the wall there, the Lee Sin jump, picking up the kill on Hecarim, but unfortunately, Warwick Ulti Ignite is able to take me down. I gotta say that for this next clip, it would never ever happen in a high rated ranked game. They leave Ash, the AD carry completely isolated at the back of the team fight, allowing me to go around behind and I'm able to completely zone her. She has her ulti, she has flash, she has summon a heal and I don't have ignite, but I'm still able to pick up the kill with relative ease, just with the damage from Triforce. I'm able to join my team at the end of the team fight to help pick up Tarek, who for some reason still has exhaust after Vayne manages to cause some mayhem in there. It's a, it's a bit weird, but we do manage to pick up Tarek and allow us to get Nasha, and that's pretty poor play, but just to demonstrate the damage potential of late game uh, Blitzcrank there. It's always nice to be able to get a pull knock up into the tower, but it's even nicer to get a flash pull knock up and give your AD carry red buff. I mean, a bit risky with uh, UX ghouls, could have hit one of them, but you know, it sways lane so much in our favour. There wasn't really a chance that UX could have been able to finish off the kill there. He was getting oom, Seville was also oom, they didn't have enough damage, and it's just given us a free kill and red buff there. So I'm going to be completely honest with you guys now, I wasn't a massive fan of Blitzcrank prior to the last couple of weeks, I didn't think he was viable, I didn't think he offered much in support during the laning phase, I didn't think he offered much late game, I didn't think he offered much in team fights, and I thought he was one of the just gimmick champions who you play purely to have fun, but honestly since I've started playing him, since I've picked him up, I really, really have understood and valued what he offers uh, to the team and I want to go over some of the situations and some of the lane matchups where he's more viable than not. It's definitely a great pick against your ADs like Ash, Varus and Cogmore as they have no definite escape mechanism. It's not such a great pick against Severe as although you can try and bait her spell shield by getting close, the best of Severe's won't allow you to do that and they'll only spell shield when necessary, they won't get tricked into doing it. It's quite a good pick against Grave surprisingly, even though he has his dash, due to his short attack range he will be getting close in for CS and close in for us, making him particularly vulnerable to your pulls. In terms of support to play against, Tarek is a very situational one, it depends how you play the game, although when you pull him in he can stun you or stun your AD carry and get into a situation where they have the advantage and it is extremely risky to pick Blitzcrank against Alistair and Leona as more often than not you'll bait your ally AD into dying especially if you take Ignite as I do and they have exhaust so as uh, some matchups avoid. There's no real great matchups to play alongside Blitz, you know, anyone with a jump is great, Ezreal's great, Tristana's great, similar to Tristana Ali, Corky is also a nice pick, but you know, anyone can work well with a Blitzcrank providing they are successful with their pulls and they maintain their threat and aggression throughout the laning phase. You cannot have a passive Blitz and you cannot have a static Blitz that stays in one lane. In terms of team fights and late game, due to Blitz's high mobility, unexpected high damage and passive tankiness, you're often ignored in team fights or the enemy is unable to shut you down, allowing you to reach the back of the team, disrupt their enemy AD carry, zone them out of the fight 
or if need be, stay by your AD carry, protect them with the short cooldown of E, you have your Q, silence, phage proc from Trinity Force and speed buff from Shrelias if needed. I personally run with the philosophy of if it's a ninja or unexpected pull, just grab anyone you can and deal with the consequences later. I mean, if it's a tank, if it's a support, just get the pull, get them out of the way and turn it into 4 versus 5 so you can take an objective. However, if the enemy is aware they could get pulled or it's not a ninja pull, you do have to be careful who you decide to grab. If you grab the wrong person, you could force an engage onto a team when perhaps the enemy needed it more, they're further ahead of you, they're stronger and the consequences could be bad. You could get aced, you could lose your inhibitor tower, your inhibitor, you could even lose the game purely from a bad pull. And again, in this clip, we're gonna see the bruiser damage potential of support Blitzcrank. So I've got my Triforce, Wukong is a higher level than me, he has a Triforce, he has a Riggle's Lantern, he's having to flash an ulti, I pop my Flash Ignite and my Shrelias and I'm able to out damage him by quite a lot. I know I did have the Carthus ulti there, but coming from a support Blitzcrank, that damage is completely unexpected and it really does make a difference in team fights. One of the main mottos and one of the best pieces of advice I can give when playing Blitzcrank is that a successful pull doesn't have to put your Q on cooldown. And what I mean by that is, if you're zoning someone, or if you're chasing someone, sometimes it's better to just save your Q, let them get zoned, have it if you need it, than chasing someone, doing the same zoning, and missing your Q, and then offering nothing for the rest of the team fight. Another sound piece of advice I have for you is not be predictable when timing your Q. And although it contradicts what I said before about spending as much time as possible before queuing, you do have to mix and match to avoid them being able to dodge it. Sometimes you can pull early only if you're confident you're going to hit, other times you might not pull at all, and sometimes you can pull in the middle. But as long as you're not predictable, you're going to be successful with your pulls. And it's exactly the opposite to playing poker online, where you want to spend the exact same amount of time before making each play. Because if your opponent can start to latch on, hmm, he's making a quick decision this time, maybe he's got a good hand, or hmm, he's taking a long time to make this decision, maybe he doesn't have such a good hand, or he's bluffing. So it's exactly the opposite to that. So, to summarise this video, it's all about analysing the movements of the enemy AD and punishing them for when they go for risky last hits by pulling them in. Later in the laning phase and later in the game, it's about getting as close as possible, using as much of the lane as possible and spending as much time before you pull, whilst mixing and matching where possible. You have to play aggressive and you have to roam a lot once you secured your lane and in terms of build it's always triple gold per 10, maybe double if you're struggling, rushing move speed 5 boots and the first major buy has to be trinity force. Try not to steal kills with your ulti where possible and know the right opportunity to ulti whether it's preventing someone from escaping or it's cancelling someone else's channeled ulti. Finally, please stop building pure mana and buying mana immune on Blitzcrank. You benefit so much more from other items as well as your team benefiting so much more from other items. Don't get misled by his passive and yeah, please refrain from mana items. I really hope you enjoyed this video guys, hopefully there's some more people inspired to play Blitzcrank. I do believe it's Blitzcrank 3 week coming up soon, or it's currently Blitzcrank 3 week at the minute, so hopefully we'll see a few more then. Let me know how you get on in the comment section below, and let me know what you think of Blitzcrank as a champion. I'd like to take this opportunity to say a massive thank you to everyone for their continued support. Recently we reached 5,000 subscribers and I'm absolutely amazed at that. Thank you so so much. Please stay up to date on Twitter and Facebook and stay tuned with the stream. I'm going to be streaming when I'm at uni next year in August, September time. So look forward to that. If you enjoyed this video, please drop it a like, a favourite, a comment and tell your friends. And please subscribe if you like what I'm doing. I really would really appreciate it. Thanks very much guys and I'll see you all next time. Peace.